So, so back there, so you're in this ghetto and your family, you're in a poor area, but you're, you have your brothers, are you close to your siblings? I'm fairly close, yeah. Huh? We talk, we talk like at least once a week now, but, uh, well, yeah. that's, that's nice. Were you back then you were close to, yeah, uh, that was a big difference of age. My sister's five years older than me, my brother four years. So we didn't really hang out with the same people and the same group, but. You know, I have love for my family. I was raised oh. to, to love my family. And your father passed. I, I he read. passed when I was uh, seventeen. He had a throat cancer. Oh. Was that from smoking or just came? Sm smoking. smoking. Yeah, he like, you know. Was that hard on heavy. you? Heavy. It was hard because it was like it, it was a little sudden, uh, and you know, I was seventeen, so like I'm still a teenager trying to figure out life, like. Going to school, not liking what I was doing in school originally, so I had to switch. And then after this happened, like hating everyone, like be, being very sensitive, getting into a lot of fights because of it. Because I was at that time where like I, I hated everyone. And, you know, life's unfair. So you had a lot of fights. I, I uh, love the fighting stuff. So Yeah, no, so I had a lot of fights, but never for like necessarily for good reasons like sometimes like a little thing would just piss me off and i would punch a dude but really but wow. yeah but, but it was not you know there are people that deserve to get punched and there are times where it was just my mood all the time and uh -huh. like sometimes like someone would say something as a joke i would just slap the dude oh like but really? well, that's pretty <laughs> aggressive but you know it was a rough time like like you're 17 years old your dad passed away like there are a lot of things that are I had unfinished business with my dad, things I never told him. I should, like, I wish I could have told him before he passed away. You, you, you know, you don't know where you fit. You, you like, yeah. it, it, it's weird, you know. Oh, yeah, I guess you're pissed off. But yeah. wait, before your father passed, you were fighting in school? No. Before that, no. Like, the only times I got into fights were, was because of my brother, but otherwise I wouldn't. Like I was not, that was not like before that I was the opposite. I was like super happy, super social, super like, you know, and it took me a couple of years before like I could get back to what I was before he passed away. Wow. Well, you, you know, you think that if you do all the years of judo, mm -hmm. and you don't really need to prove anything because you're fighting all the time. Yeah, yeah. But it was, uh, yeah, it wasn't about proving anything. No, no, but you're yeah, yeah. you're social, of course. Yeah, yeah. No, of course, yeah, so yeah, of course. Before your father. Yeah, yeah, before bef uh, yeah, before that. Need, yeah, of course. You, like, know, you, you fight every day, kind of. I mean, well, yeah, it's yeah. not a joke being like, thrown, spun around the air. Yeah, boom, yeah, yeah. Right, that doesn't yeah. feel good all the time. Don't no, fuck this. <laughs> right, I mean, I know I did the judo. There's some interesting moves on yeah. judo. Yeah. My teammates were fucking assholes too. Oh, really? I loved them, but they were assholes. Too. Uh, abuse you a little bit. Fuck. Yeah, I feel that's the only way you learn. Like, you only learn by people not playing nice with you. Like, you got to go hard. Like, you got to go hard. Otherwise, you yeah. you never level up. Yeah, you slowly. But, yeah, get beat up. You got to get beat up. It makes yeah. makes you know how much you yeah. can take, right? Yeah. So, oh. you're in the street. You'd be like, okay, I, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's all you got? Yeah, right. right. All right. No problem, right? <laughs> I mean, that, that's what judo is for, too. Yeah. It's for self-defense, too. Yeah, you can use it. Yeah. You can use yeah, it for that for sure. Land them on their head, and that's yeah. it. They're dead. Fuck, man. They're done because those those moves are. I know that's all balanced. And I used to love a sweep I did in jujitsu, uh -huh. where I just put my leg on the other side, and you know, grab that side, and whoosh. so it's kind of a judo kind of move a little bit for yeah. a sweep, just yeah. a balance thing. Yeah, yeah, judo is a lot of balance. Of course. So anyway, so you're doing the judo. You're in school. You're getting good grades. What kind of grades did you get? I was uh, I was always in the like like high B's, A's, I was doing good. And uh, um, my grade dropped after my dad passed away because I would like skip school a lot and not be as, you know. Um, so then I had to uh, choose a path that wasn't the path I wanted to take. I went to like learn electronic in a school like like where you learn electronic. So I did that for two years, hated it. So that's after high school, yeah, right? That's yeah, like yeah. a finishing school? Yeah, yeah. So cause I want to know, before we go to high school, I mean, before uh -huh. we get out of high school, uh -huh. you know, I'm leaning to a point about the girls, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to know, so you were doing very well, B's and A's, yeah. right? Yeah. And then any uh, hard subjects that you were taking? 
No, what kind of math? Like, uh, fuck, I don't remember back back then the math. Was Did you like math or no? I love math. I love math. I was re- naturally good at math. Okay. I used to read a lot because, like, the school where I was going was, uh, I got kicked out of two schools for fighting. So the next school I was at was uh, an hour and a half away from my house. So I would take the train every morning to go, the train to come back. So it was three hours a day in the train. So oh. I would read a lot back then. Oh. Oh, so I, back then I loved we didn't have our cell phones we didn't have you know so I would read a lot every day every day every day so I like also French uh, I, math was naturally like a natural uh, thing for me okay so you yeah, you were paying attention yeah right. that's good <laughs> and sometimes I wasn't but like it just made sense like it was something I understood naturally so uh-huh. yeah okay I like to understand you know so you were a um, diligent student pretty much Plus, you're already training, so like the martial arts uh-huh. could help school too. A lot, yeah. Because right? you're lot. competing, you don't want to be a loser. No, no, right? a, a lot. And also, uh, my my teacher was very strict on grades. Like, if you didn't have a certain like level of grades, you, you couldn't go train. Oh, really? Yeah, he that's was nice. he was hard like that. Well, that's nice. I mean, that that's really that helps you out because yeah. when you're young, anything can happen. Yeah, you know, anything can happen. Your grades, you know, anything can happen. I, take it from me. Yeah, I, I was bad in school. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't think that, or you might think that, but no. I'm a successful person. Yeah, but you might think, oh yeah, he probably did fine in school. You you find out that being good in school doesn't have to do anything with intelligence. No. Uh, like some people don't have the yeah the passion for it. Some people just it's not the right time to learn. Some people the way that they, they are taught is not the right way. Yeah, you know yeah. exactly right there. If you don't have a teacher that teaches you with a little bit of love and understanding, yeah, you could be a fight back and say "fuck off." Yeah, I'm and not, you're gonna hate it even yeah. more instead of trying to go the right way. Exactly. So let's go to the best point, right? Because when I was young, I loved the girls. I love them all, right? So, yeah. You love them. So when did you see a girl? First, see a girl. I mean, you've seen them, right? But when did you say one day, say? I want to. I was. Uh, I smell her hair. I see her ass. You know, when was the first time you, you said. You know wow. what's crazy is at a very young age, um, I was five years old and I was in a school and um, they called my parents because every day, like uh, around 1 p.m. after lunch, we had nap time in that school. And I got caught several times while the girls were sleeping, looking under their skirts. So they called my parents, mm. and also there was a couple of times where I told the girls to follow me. I would take them to a corner so they can show me their panties. But I was a kid, wow. and uh, I got caught. And they would call my parents, say, "This is what's going on. You guys need to have a talk." And of course, my parents never had a talk with me about this. You know, um, that's interesting to have that thought. To yeah. tell that's pretty bold. Yeah. To tell them to come with you. <laughs> that's pretty bold. I just like, I don't know. Like, it was like, like a natural instinct for me to like be a perv, I guess. Like, even in my neighborhood, I would always talk to girls and try to have them follow me so I could see their thing, you know? <laughs> really? It was Because so you weird. like looking at their things? It was so weird. Yeah. And then I wouldn't touch. I was just looking at it like a little perv. So you, you want know? to look at the pussies? Yeah. That's and the wild. butts too. And, um, uh, when I was eight years old, uh, I found a porn magazine that my brother had under his uh, bed. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? And I started watching it. And I remember that in that magazine, there was a, a phone number. And so I called that phone number. And it was like pre-recorded stories. So there was women telling you porn stories, like adventure, things that happened to them. They met that guy and went in a train and fucked them was eight years old fucking trying to jerk off and not understanding but i naturally was touching my dick and uh what's funny about that is that because i was eight those phone those phone numbers were expensive and you got busted well my (laughs) brother got busted because my parents never thought that an eight-year-old was calling those numbers they thought oh he's 12 13 that must be him so he got killed for it. Like my par- my dad was fucking, like whooped him. And 
he made me pay letters where le- later in life he make me he made me pay where he was hiding all his porn under my bed and then one day my mom found his porn under my bed thinking it was mine uh-huh. and I got whooped for it but um so at a very young age I realized that uh-huh. you know I was I- into girls and women and then um I would like stop kissing girls and like when did you start kissing like i was 11 12 oh. and uh, just because gr- gr- i wanted to kiss him but i was too scared oh, right dude. but but a lot of the girls would come pick me up at at my house to go to school with them like like somehow i was not like the best looking kid but i had a thing that made the girls like me and so they would come get me hey we go to school together and we can hold hands and then Like one one day, one of the girls kissed me. Like before I kissed her, she kissed me. And I was all shy. I didn't talk to her for over a week. Because I was like, what the fuck just happened? Like, like don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Like, really? You know. Yeah, yeah. I was super shy. And this is a 11 or? Yeah, I was about 11. 11? Yeah. And then, um, and then I had a growth spurt where I grew up like between 12 and 13 years old. I grew up like crazy. And I was already like super tall. And my first, the first time I had sex was with a girl that was, uh, I was 13 and she was 20. And like, I swear. And she thought I was 17 because I grew up, I was so tall at 13. Huh. And um, she picked up on you? Yeah. Oh, she was that, she was known in the neighborhood for being the girl that had no problem, like fucking whatever you know? but she came on to you oh yeah okay. yeah and then i fucked her i mean i fucked her. you were 13 when you fucked i her. was 13 and how'd that and go fuck the 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 very beginning i was this close to penetrate her when i came so i came before even touching her pussy dude wow man that's fucked up and then i was able to go, oh, go again, again. Oh, you know, it's not fucked up. And she had condoms. So I was like, okay, yeah, you know, and true. that's probably how it started actually. Like, because she was, she had condoms. Wow. That's a trip. Right. And so then we fucked. It wasn't great. It was lame. Honestly, I re- regret doing it so early. I don't think, I don't think anyone. Really? Yeah. I think 13 is too fucking young. dude. Like, like I, really? I didn't really have fun. I didn't really understand what i was doing i didn't like when i was done i felt like yeah, that was that sex like that was kind of lame you know mm-hmm. like my second time my second time i was 15 i had so much more fun but my first time i was like yeah. wow you know i had sex when i was 12 fuck you beat me man <laughs> i fucked his girl for four hours she tapped out really she i was chased around the house the next morning she sent me over to her friends i fucked her too no way <laughs> Fuck. I was having fun, but yeah. I told you we're made for this. Like we're we're special breed. Yeah. Something weird, right? Yeah. Something strange. Because I I I used to fuck my girlfriend for hours and hours and yeah. hours. Naturally. She'd tell all her friends. Yeah. One yeah. of uh one of my ex girlfriend when I was young, I used to go to her place and she lived at her mom's and she had two brothers. And years later, I saw her brother, that was her older brother, and we stopped laughing, and he was like, dude, what the fuck was wrong with you guys? Like, you guys made it so uncomfortable because you guys were fucking all the time, all the time, and they could hear it clearly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, that was just, like, same thing. Like, I could be done and start again and done and start again. And yeah, right, never my dick didn't go down, right? Yeah, yeah. I would wake up in the morning, go to school, it'd be hard, come home, it's hard, I'd be like, Fuck. Yeah, yeah, the same, man. The same. Yeah, that's crazy. So at 15, you started. Really, yeah. Really, when I was 15, like my second, after my second time, that's when, like, I really understood what fucking uh, making love or having sex was and, like, how much fun it can be. Yeah. And then I never stopped, man. Yeah. Like, like, like I told you earlier, like, my friends used to call me Rocco because, like, I was fucking all the time. All the time. Really, like, like, give me an example. How many different girls from 15 to 20? How many different girls? Not including amateur movies. Uh, yeah, yeah, without movies, like, 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 
I probably fucked a hundred girls before I ever did porn. That's pretty good. Because that's all I wanted. Like, like I, I, I didn't want a relationship. I just wanted to have sex. I wanted to have good sex. So. And the girls were happy. Yeah, they seemed happy. <laughs> they seemed happy. You know, <laughs> you fucked the shit out of them. You know, I, also, you know, practice <laughs> makes perfection. So I'm sure that. After each girl I fucked, like I was getting a little better and better. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, if you pay attention to it, right? Because when you're younger, you're not always paying attention. I don't think because you uh -huh. don't know all those yeah. tricks that there could be, right? You're still discovering too. Like you yeah. still, you know. I mean, because I, I was similar. We're similar in a lot of ways. Yeah. Because I fucked about a hundred and something girls before I got into business. <laughs> I was chasing him down. <laughs> Same, man. I love him. Well, that's interesting. So then, yeah, man. What did your mother say about you f having sex with all the girls in the so, city? Well, what's funny is that in the beginning, she was always joking, ah, Manuel, he always has the girls coming to pick him up to go to school. And then they went from that to like, yo, you you have to calm down. Like, like, Like my mom, she was like very old school, like, you must have one girlfriend. You can like, because she would see me like in the city with one girl one day and then two days later with another girl and she wouldn't understand, you know, because uh -huh. she's like very old school, like Spanish lady, that, you know. Oh, yeah, proper. Yeah. yeah, like for her, it's like you get one person and that's all you get for you the rest of your life. I was like, mom, it's not, that's it's not who I am. Uh -huh. It's not who I am. And then, uh, and then you you know, when your mother, all you care about is your kid to be uh, healthy and you know well. And she thought I was happy like that. So she was like, <laughs> real right. happy, you know, right? She was like, all right, I guess that's how it is. Did, did the girls say, "Hey, man, well, you got a big dick. I like it." What they say? So that's what's funny is that girls would always tell me, "Man, you have a big dick," and you have. A, and I thought when I was younger, I always thought that it was something the girls say to the guys to make them feel good. Uh -huh. And it's only when I did my first porn scene that I told you about, when I pulled my dick out and the girl was like, Whoa, the girls, they were both like, whoa, what the fuck, right? That I realized that the girls in the past, they were not just saying that, uh -huh. that it was probably true. If porn girls thought that the big dick, uh -huh. maybe I have a big dick, right? Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. you never realize, like, you never, like, you know, I would watch porn, but I never thought, ah, oh, yeah, my dick's big. Like, like, I didn't think like that. Uh, yeah. And it's really doing porn that I realized I had a big dick. Yeah. When did you start watching porn? Huh. Young. Well, like I told you when I was... A the magazines you told me, right? Yeah, the magazines. And yeah. it was really hard to actually watch, watch porn when I was younger because we didn't have a VCR in my house. We didn't have one. Too poor, you're saying? Yeah. Like, so we didn't have tapes or anything. So the the first time I saw porn was at my friend's house. It was a weird setup where there was like five of us watching a porno. It's not fun to watch porno with guys. Right. And <laughs> like, we're just watching. Like, we're not jerking off or anything. Like, one after the other, like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Fuck, disappear for like 15 minutes and then come back. Like, it was fucking that's weird. That's not, that's not a good way to watch porn. That's a frustrating way. Oh, to watch yeah, that's like, terrible. It's just, you know. And um, so for the longest time, I was more watching like, like magazines than actual movies. I mean, Paris is pretty open-minded with the porno, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, back in the days, like, you would watch a soap commercial and you would see pussy and tits, you know, like, hey, this is the yeah. new soap. And then you see a girl under the shower fully naked, you know. Um, but uh, I really started to watch porn when I started like uh, going to school and taking the train because every day, like I had a few changes. And there was one change that I did that I had to walk by a sex shop every day. And sometimes they would have like promotional deals like buy one DVD, two hours of porn, <laughs> 20 scenes in two hours, like, you know, that type of shit. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, it's pretty cheap. 
And so, <laughs> so like the cheapest. Eh? Well, yeah, back then I didn't have money, so I was like, oh, "That's a good deal." There's 20 yeah. scenes in like. How old are you? I was probably 18, 19, okay. you know, and uh, I was already like sexually active, but still like like but like we say like I was fucking horny all the time. And so I remember having a couple tapes, finally had a VCR at home, my own room, and I could lock the door and everything, then I would watch porn. You know, but, uh, was that mostly European porn? Or was it American? No, it's funny, a lot of it was American porn. Those are the porn where, like, like you, you know, I would see everyone and all those girls. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah? Dude. <laughs> there was some, I mean, because there were some girls I remember uh -huh. from the 80s. Yeah. I used to, you know, because I fucked all the girls in the 90s, pretty yeah. much, except yeah. for Keldarian, right? <laughs> But uh, there were some girls that I loved from the 80s. But yeah. you're the you're more 90s, so you might not yeah. have seen the 80 movies, right? Well, I still watch some of the old school ones. Yeah. Like I still watch movies with, like, with like John Leslie as a performer, and you know, like, even, like, Urshel Savage and those guys. And Jamie Gillis. Jamie Gillis, yeah. yeah. Randy West. Yeah, Randy. Randy. I liked Randy. Randy was always. You talked to Randy before? Uh, I, I talked to him way later when I came uh -huh. to America. He's such a cool dude. Cool guy. Cool dude. Uh, he was, uh, yeah, he, he was always, I think at the beginning, because I was a new guy in town, you know, uh -huh. but I started taking a lot of people's work. Yeah. Know, a lot of people's. Yeah. Tom Byron didn't like it. Uh, oh, yeah. Mark Wallace didn't like it. Biff Malibu definitely didn't like it. That yeah. Was, that was the end of him. Anyways. But right, Randy West is cool, but afterwards, you know, he's he's a cool guy. Yeah. He, he's like old school guy. I mean, he is old school guy for sure. Really? Good, nice guy, yeah. Yeah. But um, the girls, can you remember any of the girls? You know Ginger Lynn, of course. Of course. In those Ginger days, Lynn. right? Yeah. Amberlynn? Amberlynn. I've worked with Amberlynn. Oh, how was it? She was great. She was all over the place. She was a little crazy. She ran in, when I worked with her, What I liked is she reminded me of Tiffany Million, like the way she was like, ah, and like her face, like going crazy. Mm -hmm. So I was turned on by it, uh -huh. right? Um, uh, Ginger Lynn, it's funny because I, I worked at her place. I rented like, like I did a scene where they rented her house. Was that the valley? Yeah, in the valley. I, I rented the house too. Remember that well, house? I just, I wasn't shooting then, but I was, you know, shooting my company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, And the whole scene, she was watching me, fucking this other really? girl. And she was already a little older, but like she was watching me. And she would see that I was looking at her while I was fucking this girl. And, oh, yeah. and she would do like that, you know? And I was like, motherfucker. She was great, right? She was so great, so hard. Dude. And she was on a show and she was so nice. Yeah, yeah. She's so nice. Do you talk to her? Yeah, uh, yeah. So nice. So nice, yeah. Christy Canyon, you work with her? I never work. Oh, man. The like amount of. Fucking come. <laughs> huh, I did a radio show one time with Christy Canyon and uh. she started showing me her tits. I was like, listen, like you need to stop it now. Like, right, don't I'm, do that, right? Right now I'm I, I'm able to hold myself back, but like like if you do this Because I virtually already fucked those girls in my mind. Like I've watched those girls and jerked off to them so many times that like like I would go crazy. Like it doesn't matter even now. Like like, there is a French porn star. Her name was Leticia, and she was very famous because she started a line of like amateurial porn. And she became very famous in France because she did French porn, but with French amateurs, and like like she fucking completely blew up, right? But she, the good th the thing she was doing too is she was putting herself in the scenes with those couples that were amateurs. Fuck, I saw her years later, and she looked a lot older, right? And she wasn't as attractive as she was in my memory, right? I would have fucked her on the spot, huh. like, no problem. Like, like cause in my mind, it was still that one girl, you know? She was still the same in my mind. Some of those girls, they they will always remain in your mind young, forever Fuck, young, forever, right? Forever, forever. Like, How about the one in um, Italy, Ciccolina? Did you watch her? Ciccolina? Yeah, I watched her. I wish I met her. Like, I've never, like, she, yeah. yeah. She was so popular, and she was on mainstream TV all the time. Uh, was she part of the government or she something? She was, uh, yeah, I think she ran for, like, an office at one point and things oh. like that. Yeah. She didn't win, though. 
I think she had a she had a seat in like, yeah, like yeah, I heard, I, right? yeah I was a kid so I, I I vaguely remember that she had like a role in the government or something. yeah I was a kid but I thought I read it in a penthouse yeah. magazine yeah or oh yeah yeah I'm in America you know yeah. What I mean? But yeah, yeah, she had a fat pussy. It looked pretty good. I like girls with fat pussies. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, some of the European like girls, man. Some of those girls too. Like, oh, man, I don't necessarily remember all their name, but, fuck. but I remember. Um, I remember a blonde that was really pretty, like Barbarella or, or yeah. something. You met Italian girl. Yeah, she think, sticks uh, out of my head. But uh, but there was a Moana Posey. Oh, Moana Posey. She was. Like her guy, her man was one like a big guy from the Italian government. Oh, like really? Big guy, like a minister or some shit like that. It was Moana Posey in the nineties, right? Yeah. Yeah, the early nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, you know, I work with. I always work with Italian companies. They always put me to work. Uh huh. You know, and um, they had one of their Italian guys one time. Uh huh. He fell apart when we did three way. <laughs> I waited for him for eight hours. Fuck. <laughs> Well, Dude, those movies, those Italian productions, though, they were killing Long, us. right? They're fucking right, long. Right, yeah. One time I did a scene for Mario Salieri. The scene was 10 hours. And like, in the middle of it, it's a lunch break. So everyone goes lunch. Mm -hmm. And then you come back and you have to like, yeah. start again. And, you know. That's exactly what happened. Mine was 8 to 10 hours. It was forever. Yeah. But the other performer was shitty, but. You know, as an Italian yeah. performer, but I was just sitting there. I'm so young. I, it does, I don't care. You yeah. know, I could fuck all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does nothing yeah, yeah. when I'm younger. But yeah, man, I just, maybe that's the same guy. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, but I do remember that one. I thought it was Barbarella. But Barbarella is a group. Jane Fonda played that in the movie, Barbarella. Uh -huh. But does that sound familiar? I believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah Italian, she was pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty fucking face. Italian girls. Oh. They're nice. Oh, okay. Pretty, yeah. Pretty face, blonde, their bodies, so like voluptuous, but like uh -huh. just the right shape at the right spot, you know. One time I went to Spain for a, a German company, but then Roberto Malone was there. Uh huh. You ever so meet Roberto? So funny. So funny. <laughs> but he's, I, I'm fairly young in the business. Pierre Woodman was there, uh -huh. right? He was just a photographer, I think, yeah. on that shoot for Hans Moser, probably. For Hans Moser. Right, yeah. in 92 of, I love Hans in Hans Spain, Moser. right? And there is, I just got off the plane, they put me to work right away. And Roberto Malone's already fucking a girl, already warmed up, right? Yeah. He's got his dick hard, he's all like, and here comes me. It's not easy to come and see him when you've been on a plane for 20 hours. For sure. Right? Or more. And then, you know, you're in unfamiliar territory. Right? And then, uh, yeah. so he kicked my ass for about three minutes. <laughs> but then the next scene, I've. And he was one of the kings there. Like, he was, was with it? his cigar, his belly, you know. Right. Like, I like He was cool. Uh, he's a cool dude. Yeah, cool. I like him too. We had to share a fucking bed, you know what I mean? Oh, shit. <laughs> and he'd come party, you know, was, we're in a, trapped in a villa at the top of Ibiza, right? Uh -huh. Anyways. But he was, he was a nice guy. I liked him a lot. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And the next scene, I'm, he couldn't even. Work probably for another week. Yeah, because because <laughs> <laughs> psychologically I got him. Anyways, but yeah, that was um my memory of uh Italian. Yeah, but he was a cool dude. He he was very nice. Very nice. Yeah, very nice guy. But um, let's see here. So how many fights do you think you would have you got in? Off the subject a little bit, but uh, I don't know. In street maybe. fights, how many? Between five and seven, maybe. Like that are fight fights, right? Like I don't count like throwing a brick at a guy's face. Like mm. that that's not a fight to me. Yeah, not it's so much. Just so me like <laughs> retaliating for getting beat I slapped. love it though. That's that's <laughs> beautiful. Really. That was a Cause somebody did that did something like that to me. Uh -huh. And I wish today I would have did what you did. Because <laughs> he was big like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish I would have taken some to it because I still and I wouldn't mind catching him one day. Yeah. And would it be funny, like what would you do? Now, if you found a guy that maybe like not bullied you, but like, like beat you when you were a kid, would you punch the guy now? You'd have to no. I have to feel the situation, but that guy would. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would. I would punch that guy. I would just <laughs> load up on him. Yeah. Pow, you know, I'm not as like I used to be. I used to be a lot quicker. You know what I mean? I was pretty fast, but I still think I get the job done pretty good. I'm you know? sure. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> I was. I. Pretty fast hands, really, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
you know, for um, punching. But um, I yeah, there's a guy, couple guys that I wish I could see. I actually called up my coach one time, the PE coach. Uh huh. Because he had put me in a chokehold because I went to the gym. Really? Yeah, and he, you know, he was a fucking cocksucker. And I tried catching him, but I couldn't get through to him. I got my people to get his number. I, like, I could see the anger. Like, even now, you're like, I tried to catch him. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm that guy, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I can wait 30 he years, probably, I don't care. He probably knows now and is hiding somewhere. <laughs> I don't think he remembers who I am. He don't care who I am, but Shit. I... Oh, I things like that you remember forever, dude. Yeah, because I was just in the gym, and he put me in a chokehold. So the guy said, why? You don't own this gym. Yeah. He put me in a chokehold. He knew some type of whatever, full Nelson. Yeah. Big deal, right? You got a little kid. I'm, I don't yeah. weigh nothing. Try it now. Shit. Anyways, so five or seven fights, really? I think so. Like, not, oh, not like. Yeah, it's just too nice. It's just. But you don't, you're aggressive, but you're just not going there because you don't want to go there? Like, uh, I don't think, like. Like it takes a lot for me to like really like besides when besides when um, your father when my father passed away it takes a lot for me to get going, but I also realize that because the way I've dealt with things in the past and most people are fucking punks, and that if you call them out on the spot they fucking act like pussies, you don't have to fight as much. But if I call out someone, it's also because I'm ready to fucking fuck the dude up. But I'm not just going to show up and fucking punch the guy in the face. Right. Like, unless the guy did something really fucked up, right? Um, yeah. I just, yeah. I, you yeah. Know. I mean, 22 years of competition. I don't, people got to know that 22 years of competition is like a... 22 years of fighting, yeah. like almost every day, probably five days a week, probably yeah. I'm getting you trained. No, when I, w uh, I was three hours a day, every day, and competing Saturdays, Sundays. Wow, that's like, that's great. That's yeah. a lot. Of, so you're fighting all the time. So yeah. really, you're nice not to beat the people up. Well, uh, <laughs> kind of, you know what I mean? Some of them, like, like some of them, uh, some of them I wish I didn't do, and others I wish I did. You know, there are people that definitely deserved it that I should have, you know, go at it or at least slap them. Because for me, slapping someone is the most humiliating thing. Like, like to me, you're not a man enough for me to punch you if yeah. I slap you, nice. you know. And if you know how to slap just right, Fuck, dude. it hurts. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Have you seen those uh, slapping competitions? Yeah, they knocked out the guy's heavy dude. hands. You don't want to slap against a guy who's got real heavy hands. Dude, <laughs> some of those guys, man. I saw an Asian guy. Fuck, they're like bear claws, dude. Like, yeah, right. like my father's hands. You can't take that slap. Fuck, you can't. I got fairly decent hands too, but I'm a small guy. But yeah, yeah, you don't want to get slapped with a big heavy hand. Shit. I got a friend who used to be Jenna's bodyguard. He's got uh -huh. real heavy hands, and he had a thousand fights, over a thousand fights. Fuck, man. You know what I mean? And he doesn't mind taking and <laughs> the two or three guys. I fight a lot of times. Uh -huh. My fights. Hardly ever did I fight one on one. Usually me yeah. fighting two, three, four, five, sometimes twenty guys. Shit. You know what I mean? But um, you know, whatever. This is about you, not me. To, no, uh, no, it's it's super interesting for me, man. I, I I've realized that, you know, we know each other for a long time. It's the first time we actually get yeah. to really, you know, talk yeah, we, to each other. We never sat down. Uh, it's a weird time goes fast. Time goes fast and you know, busy time too, you know? Yeah, you know, uh, I was always just, I really didn't hang out that much. You know? yeah, yeah. I was friends with Nacho and Peter North, a little friendly, but I, I didn't really associate, and Dion, you know? Yeah. I didn't really talk to too many I, people. I, I, you know? I love Dion, dude. Dion. Yeah. I love Dion. That's, we'll get to that in a second. That's my dude. That red, yeah? Yeah. Well, he's my boy. You know, you know what I mean? Did you say you went to college? Yeah. To be a P teacher. P teacher, that's right. Yeah. And that was for a Two years? For uh, for four years. Four years? Four years, yeah. Four fucking years to be a t PE yeah, teacher? Yeah, four years to oh, be four? a PE teacher. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. What sports did you play in school? So, uh, in school, did I have judo? So, I played a lot of soccer. Oh, uh, okay. I loved soccer. I was actually, I feel like soccer was a more natural sport for me than judo, but I didn't have the love for it. 
Like I was really good in soccer, but I wasn't having as much fun as when I was doing judo. How tall are you? Six one. Six one. Yeah. I mean, you're like in stature, is like the same as Nacho. Six one, right? Uh -huh. I mean, it's very close. You guys <laughs> from <laughs> the different side of the the river, right? Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's a, that's a trip. So you seem kind of big for soccer. I don't I don't watch soccer that so, much. When I was younger and when I was competing in judo, uh -huh. uh, first of all, soccer players are pretty. Big, oh, yeah? Right, yeah. But, but they're shorter. But no, some of oh. them are giants. Today? Yeah. Not no. yesterday, yeah, yeah. no? Just the goalkeeper. I, I think was back tall. in the days, like they were about my height now. Some of them now, they're giants. Wow, really? Like really big. I don't pay attention. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really big. But when I used to compete in judo, uh, when I was 18, 19, I, I was already 6'1. Uh -huh. And I was competing at uh, 71 kilos, which is... Uh, 165 it, or something? It's like 154. 154, okay. So I was like tall, but super slim, because I had to always like drain my body for each competition. And we were competing. It's not like in MMA. It's a lot like in wrestling, where you're constantly competing, so you always have to cut the weight for the competition, like from one week to another, like... Yeah. Why, why didn't you, I'm, I'm curious, you know, why did you go to a, a heavier weight? Because I wanted to be the biggest in my weight class more than the, the smallest in the next weight class. So, same old story. Yeah, exactly. Same pretty much, you know, right? <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, uh, but 154, I was like shredded. Like yeah. my body was just like, like super shredded. And I wasn't as thick muscularly as I was back then. I was very lean muscle too. So, um, yeah, it was. It was a, see, and Nacho did a lot of karate uh -huh. and boxing. Yeah. So you guys both are, you know, it's very, yeah. you know, uh, uh, yeah. it's interesting. I guess like it's uh, um, interesting. You guys are fairly similar in certain in ways. In certain ways, yeah. yeah. He's a lot hyper than I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Helen Duvall. Helen Remember Duvall. Helen? I worked with her. Yeah? You liked her? Fuck. I, so one day Steve Holmes calls me and he's like, hey, uh, there's that lady and she's shooting in uh, in Holland, right? And she's like, uh, she wanted me to go, but I'm busy on a production. I gave her your number, so she's going to call you. I'm like, okay, what's your name? He, and he's like, Helen Duvall. I'm like, I jerked off to her like a million times, right? I work with her a lot of times. Oh, fuck. And she calls me. She's like, hi. Uh, and she's like, so, you know, I, she's like, because it was towards the end of her career, right? What? Well, you're, because you're still in Europe? Or yeah, this? I'm still in Europe. Um, like, But I knew Steve, so it was probably around 2003, 2004. And she calls me and she's like, Would, like I want to shoot you for a scene in my movie. And she's like, would it be okay if the scene is with me? I'm like, listen, I only come if, if the scene is with you. If the scene's not with you, I have no interest in being in your movie. She's like, okay. <laughs> so I arrived there, uh -huh. and she's all like, like, I did something I would never do now. It's like, I took a night train, and I had to go to like Brussels, and from Brussels, I took another train that took me to like Amsterdam or something like that, you know? And I arrive, I'm wrecked. Like I couldn't sleep. People were too loud. It was a shitty train. They, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. And then she shows up, and I like I forgot everything. All I wanted to fuck her on the spot. And she come and she grabs me and give me like a deep kiss right away. I'm like, oh fuck, you don't know. Fucking went nuts. She's a very nice person. So nice. Yeah, I remember. I worked with her numerous times. Maybe uh -huh. she liked me, or maybe I just happened to be there. You know what I mean? So I don't know, but she was always so nice. Well, she's the type of lady that loves what she does. Like, she's very professional, but she loves what she does. So, like, yeah. it's good. Like, you know, it's... it's yeah. She was, yeah, she was always cool. Did you work with Teresa Orlowski? No, I came too late for that. Yeah, that's why. Teresa Orlowski, like, fuck something. I jerked off so many times to her. I would have, I would fuck her now. And she's probably yeah. 90. She's sexy? Uh, dude, to me, like, jerking off to those girls. Like, like, again, like, we go back to the same thing where, like, to me, she could be 90 now. In my mind, she still looks like she looked uh -huh. back in the 80s, right? But 
the other thing with Teresa Orlovsky, like it's uh, like she had like so much success in porn. Like I remember, like she had a company and they had, yeah, and they had studios where like they were fucking everywhere shooting. Scenes. Did you go there? No, I never been there. I I always had my agents back. That's me loyal. You know, uh -huh. I love the guy. You know, Jim yeah. South. Yeah, but they want me to go, but I would not go because they didn't pay Jim. But go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. I you, you know. I I, I want to go to Germany, man. Fuck, man. <laughs> I was a young kid, you know what I mean? Dude, I I I hear all the stories from Rocco, from Christoph Clark, from all those guys that you, David Perry used to work there, you know. And I'm jealous, like 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 there are a lot of girls I wanted to fuck from back then, you know. I really wanted to go to Italy too. Yeah, but they wouldn't pay my agent. I wouldn't go. Oh, really? But that's life. Yeah. I've been to Italy. I went by myself. But anyways, you know, it's fun when you're young. Yeah. You go on location. For yeah, me, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm from nowhere. And, you know what I mean? I'm like, and, I'm going to go to Italy. New location, new pussies. Yeah, too. everything, like, right? You know, everything is like exciting. Yeah. Plus yeah. there, yeah, you know, you arrive, you're American. You're like, you know, it's a lot like when I first came to America, I was that French guy in LA, barely spoke English. And the girls were like, oh, say this in French. Uh -huh. I would say it, and they were like, oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey. <laughs> I felt like Pippi the Pew, you know? <laughs> That's fucking. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the I think the, f the girls love the foreigners, but not all the foreigners, right? No, 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 you got to no, be no. a European foreigner, I think. Yeah. I think, or, you know what like, I mean? Or like if you're American in Europe, it works really? the same. Yeah, Is oh, it? Yeah, yeah, well, well, yeah. I didn't get to go. Fuck, they loved it. They love it. I'm gonna bring a couple more girls up. Do you remember Savannah? Um, Savannah, which one? The one, the American one or the European one? The American one that died. Oh, Savannah, the one that died. The blonde. Yeah, I Did remember. You? I was a big fan of her. Yeah, she was pretty. She was so pretty. She was, pretty. Yeah, she was big fan. Did you was, work with her? Yeah, numerous times. Yeah, she liked yeah. me. I think she requested me a lot of times, yeah. all the time. Yeah. But she yeah. was very. She was. I I remember the day she walked in. She hadn't done any movies yet. Uh -huh. Right, she walked into this company called Video Exclusives. Okay. Right, and she walked in with a guy named Rex. This guy was smooth, right? I remember saying, "Fuck!" She had that bang haircut. She hadn't had tits yet. Yeah. She just did those. What you think about probably when you're in France. A California blonde, right? They have, that's an idea. Of right? course, of course. And she had that light, you know, and nice body and it's cute. And I was like, oh, she's pretty. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, you know, I work with her a lot. But she was very nice. Yeah. But anyways, what about um, Terry Weagle? <sighs> Same thing. A little bit like uh, like Teresa Olovsky. Like, I love the way she looked, like the big tits, the face. Um, wait, no, I, I, oh, I worked with her, oh, yeah. actually. Tell me, because I didn't get to work okay. with her, man. So she tried to do a comeback. No, no, but it was pretty bad, actually, because she tried to do a comeback, and her and I did a scene, but weirdly enough, she couldn't take my dick. Like, I, I fucked her just with the tip of my cock the whole scene. Wow, really? and, in it, and it wasn't like a case of her, like, acting like, like oh it hurts I can't no like she was actually trying to push it in and my dick wouldn't go in. Wow, really? Yeah, huh. it was a trip, huh. and I was so excited to uh, to to work with her, and she was into it, right? And the di the director who was a woman, she was like, so what do you guys want to do? Like, should we do the scene? And I was like, no, I still want to do the scene, even if it's just the tip of my cock. I just I want to do it, and then we did it and. If you watch the scene, you don't really realize that we had that problem. Mm -hmm. But I wish it would have been better because, like, you know, I fantasize about her. Well, she was, I never got to work with her, yeah. but she was around my time. Yeah. And I said to myself, that fucking girl is maybe the prettiest girl I've ever seen in porno. Yeah. But that's what I, I thought. This is that 94, yeah, 95. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh my God, this girl is just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I never got to work with her, but she looked beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. And she was still, like, even though I worked with her, like, years and years later, she was still beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, she worked for my company. You know, she did yeah. a, a MILF. Yeah. But she wasn't, like, 1995. Yeah, of course. She was a Playmate of the Year, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she was just insane, yeah. right? 
What about Kylie Ireland? I love Kylie. And when I when I arrived in LA, she was back performing. Uh -huh. But I remember that I loved her when she was uh, under contract, right, for video team or something like that for a while. Really? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. She was under contract, and then uh, she quit the industry for a while, and then came back. And I loved working with her. She was always great. Loved fucking like it's good. good Good person. Yeah, good. Good pussy. Yeah. <laughs> she has a good pussy. And she loved it, man. Like, and it was always great working with her because like she loved, loved, loved fucking. And she was always nice and beautiful. And yeah, I like her. And she's still super nice. Her and her guy now. Like uh, I saw her guy not long ago and he was like, Yeah, she's doing great. She's happy. And you know. Uh, so I'm trying to get her on the show. I mean, I fucked yeah, her. That would fucked be her numerous times, but she's too busy for me. <laughs> It's amazing sometimes, you know, when you, um, life is a trip because, yep. you know, I was at Jim's party and he turned 80 years old. Wow. Right. And everybody, oh, hey, TT, we love you. And I call him up. I say, hey, show up. Uh, well, well. I'm like, All right. Shit. I mean, it's weird. Yeah. So I appreciate you coming. No, it's my pleasure. I'm uh -huh. super happy to be here. Dude. For you. real. Yeah. For real. Like I don't like I don't like saying shit like that because I don't like to be a fanboy, but I'm a big fan, man. Oh, thanks, man. I'm a big, big fan. You don't know. Really? Like I'm Thank serious. You. No, when I tell you, like when I was younger, like to me, there was the two guys. There was you and Rocco, like that. I, when I watched scenes that were different for me, there was always you two. You seen you seen that I had some passion. Yeah. I mean, of I was I love the girls. I and I could tell you loved I love them. Yeah, exactly. You were like wild. You were like you, you know. No, seriously, seriously. I love them. I loved I feel so lucky that the porn gods <laughs> picked me up and let me come in. You know what yeah, I mean? No, I know. I no, know the I, feeling. I know the feeling. I did the work, but you know, I mean I, yeah. I was happy. So what about Christopher Clark? I'm just curious. Was he a good performer? People say he was Fucking good. Fucking amazing. Like, yeah. like that was a guy that was, he had a dick like this. Christopher? Christopher, oh. yeah. He had a dick like this. Curved. And he still had one of the best, I, I think in Europe, the second best career ever. Oh. You know, he was the biggest star back in the 80s. He was like the lead role in every, because back then they, there wasn't really Gonzo in the 80s. They were all feature films. Yeah. And he was always the lead role for the Italians, from the Germans, for like, he was always the main guy. Really? But more yeah. than Roberto? More than Roberto. Oh. Roberto was always the second really? lead next to Christoph. But Christoph, he had a big awakening when Rocco arrived in porn. Because back in the days, Christoph was, you know, a little chubby, he was doing his work, good looking man, you know, smoking a cigar. But he was like, you know, you say Christoph had an awakening, Christoph, not Roberto. Yeah, no, Christoph had an okay. awakening, because then when Rocco shows up, all of a sudden, he's got the fucking six foot four Italian god, <laughs> fucking abs, pecs, long dick, like shows up, fuck the girls, they all want to fuck him, it fucking hit him hard, and then all of a sudden, Rocco starts getting the lead roles in the movies, and Christoph less, and and then Christoph woke up, and he did. He did what he had to do. He got back in shape. He started working out. He started working hard. He stopped drinking. It like, you know. Yeah. And then back in the days in Europe, they were the two biggest European stars, you know. And uh, great guy, man. Like, he helped me a lot. I know that him is, and... Is he French? French, yeah. Okay. I know that him and, and Rocco, they used to be best friends and then best mm -hmm. enemies and then best friends again and then enemies again. There's always oh, like really? women. Wow. Lady stuff that happened. And uh, to me, Christoph, he, he helped me in this industry almost as much as Rocco. Like, that's a guy that had my back and wow, right. really did, you know. When when he heard that John Stalliano was shooting a movie here, he called him and told him, like, hey, you need to use Manuel. And I know that's what made John watch my scenes and decided to bring me here. So I think they both... Both helped me and changed my life together. We might want to let the people who are watching, uh -huh. you know, understand this. Yeah. To have John Stagliano, like you said, have all these people in America, yeah, call you up, yeah, to do his movie and get you all the way from Europe over to America. 
It was a huge deal. The big deal. Huge deal. The big fucking deal. Huge deal. One of the biggest productions. Like he spent like crazy amount of money. Yeah. So yeah, everyone was like, why the fuck would he bring this guy? Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. I mean, not everybody can understand it out there, but they got to uh, explain it to him. It's yeah. a big fucking deal. Because yeah. John probably put, what, a hundred or, or more into that movie? He spent 400,000. Oh my God. Yeah. Really? Back then, yeah. That's a great opportunity. Yeah. Of that's course. a beautiful thing, man. Of course. And I my first role in America, and I'm like... That's great. You know. John, why don't you call me? <laughs> I, I was still working. with 2000? 2002. Oh, I wasn't working. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was done. But, I mean, he probably still would have called you. <laughs> I, me and John never... I worked for him, but I never got my groove working for him. I don't know why. John is a... A very interesting guy, man. Like, like I love John because he's a very he's very passionate about porn, but he's so out there, man. Like, like I love the guy. I was a fan of of the Buttmans and everything. I'm very happy he brought me here, but I I never felt like him and I had a connection. Like, cause his mind goes mm -hmm. is on the planet that I'm not. You yeah. know, I have a lot of respect for that dude. For like bring. Even without bringing me here and everything, like what he accomplished in porn, like I will always love and respect people that are passionate about this industry. Which, yeah, for sure, me too. Yeah. I can't, it's a sin if you're part of this world I to, never understood. to go against that. Yeah, I never understood. Yeah. Like, like, but Stagliano, right, he's, yeah. he did so much, so yeah. much. And did you know that he was a performer in the 80s? Yeah. <laughs> did you know that he was in the first Chippendale uh, group? Uh, I didn't know he was in the first one, but I heard he was part of a dancing. Yeah, he yeah. was in the first Chippendales. Yeah. There is, a, there is a movie where he was on the cover with two girls. And like, here and there to fuck with him, I sent him the cover. Oh, like, yeah? Remember this, John? That's you. <laughs> it's like, fuck you. He had a weird name, too, because uh -huh. I had... Marcy Hirsch on here. You know Marcy Hirsch? Uh-huh, of course. And Marcy knew him in those movies because the, the father had his movies or something like that. Yeah. Because Marcy's father had a company. You know, yeah, Steve yeah. and Marcy. Yeah, yeah. You know, before that was the father. Yeah. And so he, she told me, I didn't know that, that he was doing porno in 80, Dude. early 80 or something. You should have, did you have uh, John on your podcast? No, but I'm going to get him on Fuck, here. Fuck, that would be awesome. Because, jo because Joey was talking to him, he said he'll come on. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, I will drill him yeah you know always the people i have respect for i only give the most respect only the most respect you know what i mean yeah and i will never disrespect anybody on my show period no of course but the people that i have respect for i'm gonna you know. yeah he's but yeah you know he changed porn man like like with the gonzo like he really like started something man like yeah no i mean is it, I was in some of his first movies. Uh -huh. Not his first, but you know, I was. I think I was early nineties. I was in his. Yeah. But man's ultimate workout. Yeah. Right with. Fuck. Patricia, ultimate. you remember that movie? Ultimate workout with Angela oh Summers and. God. And then I was in a Wild Goose Chase, the film he did. Uh -huh. Him and Patrick Collins did it. Yeah. I was in a lot of his stuff. But I never felt. I never got the um, my. 100% I was able to give to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see, I see what you, know what you mean? mean. Yeah, yeah. But I never gave him what I have in certain times, you know, with certain girls. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know what I mean? You know yeah. how it is sometimes you can give more with a girl you like. Of course. And the uh, ambience or the situation, you know, it's more comfortable or, you know. Yeah. Like Joey Silver, I work for Joey a lot and I did I a lot of good Joey. work for him. I love Joey. Joey yeah, is so great. funny. He makes it easy to work. Yeah. Yeah, but... I'm from the features days, yeah. so then a gonzo scene usually is pretty easy yeah. compared to features. John Leslie was like that too. Like, like I remember the first time I worked for John Leslie. Like he's like, okay, let's do the the cum shot. I was like, what? Pretty so quick, yeah. Like no, I, I, I just <laughs> warmed up. I'm not done, dude. <laughs> like what? <laughs> the, what the fuck? Like can I fuck a little more? I miss John. John was. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. He was a real. Um, what do you want to call it? Like a, a gift or a you know a piece of the business, yeah. a gift to the business. And and so much class, man. Yeah, that always. dude was yeah. so much class. Yeah, he was naturally, you know. Yeah, he had that. He was very charismatic. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was. You know, he gave me. I was so young, you know. I mean, I was so young when I started, twenty years old, you know. Yeah. So 
So I was shy, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, he gave me a lot of chances right away. That's great. Yeah. So I, I, got, I had a lot of love for him. Yeah. You worked for him a lot of times? For Leslie? Uh, f- uh, yeah. Uh, I, was a, I was a fanboy, man. Like I remember not even charging him. I really? would go do scenes for John, and he, when he would pay me, I was like, John, I can't take your money. I was like, really? dude, I just, I was just so happy. That's incredible. I was really? just so happy, like working for him. I'm like, nah, man, I'm, I'm okay. Not wow. next time. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, and he was like, like, no, dude, what the fuck? Like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, dude. Like, really? Yeah. Wow. I never heard of that. Yeah. That's pretty nice. It's, That's it's pretty it's interesting. A, there are people like that where, like, like, y- y- you know, it's not. It's not always about money. I'm doing well. There are people like like you have so much respect. Like you were saying, like you have so much respect for them and they don't ask you to do it for free. It's just it's just like like man, like I wanted to do this. It's not you hiring me. It's me that wanted badly to be part of this movie. So Yeah, well it's uh, you know I don't know if I would have worked for free, but I don't think money didn't mean that much to me back then. Uh-huh. You know, when I was working, so maybe I similar feelings, yeah. but maybe not as far to that side let, as you let, are. Let, let's say if someone came to you and say, "Okay, you can fuck Rachel Darian, oh yeah, but we free, won't, but we won't pay you." Uh, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it today. Let's, let's do it now. I want to get even, man. <laughs> I'll find her. Man. I want to get even now. <laughs> I want to fuck her so good that fucking boyfriend's gonna be pissed. <laughs> Cause man, I got skills, man. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, yeah. It was, yeah, it was a little. I remember working for John Leslie, and me and Rocco. Rocco was, was Curse of the Cat Woman. Yeah. Right. I guess all the other guys sucked, but I was the only guy that did. I think Rocco said something. You're the only guy that could do something. Rocco ever say anything sure. about me? Yeah, he, he loves you, dude. Yeah. Like I remember when he first took me to your place, like he mm-hmm. was like talking about you and how in America you're the best and like blah blah blah. You know, of course. Well, that's nice. But I knew you before I even said anything, so uh-huh. it's okay. <laughs> yeah, you didn't say much at my house at all. You just well, you you know, I, I barely spoke English back then. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, uh-huh. like when I did fashionistas, because uh-huh. John asked me to learn more English, but when I showed up, I was still I still sucked in English and. Most of the things I, I, I say in the movie, I learned phonetically. And Rocco told me like what it meant, but I had no idea. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's not really that easy to learn a language that quick. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You can't just... Yeah. The, the only way is to just be surrounded by English-speaking yeah. people, and that's yeah. how you're going to learn fast. But you sound pretty good now. Yeah. With, with I still have the <laughs> French accent. I yeah. always joke saying that, really, I'm from Ohio, but I do the French accent for the ladies, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah, it works. <laughs> but you know what I used to find out? If you can make the girls laugh mm-hmm. during a scene or before the scene, I used to be so funny, right? And, yeah. and the girls would be like, hi. Hey, you know, the pussies are wet already. They're already yeah. marinated. That's good. Uh, you know, so you, Ohio's. So tell me, so you're, you have this huge opportunity, uh-huh. right? $400,000 movie. I mean, that's a big deal. That's like Insane. more than some of these regular Hollywood movies. Not a big Hollywood movie, yeah, but yeah. You know, a B movie. Yeah. So uh, how did, you, you said you did great. How did it go? Yeah, I, I, I mean, the, the acting I had was terrible, obviously. Uh-huh. But the sex scene was fucking incredible. Who was the girl? Her name was, um, shit, Caroline Pierce. She had a big ass. Not much tit. Caroline Pierce. Caroline Pierce. White. She had a big. Really white skin. Really white skin. I put really, her in my really, movies, yeah. yeah, really big ass. Yeah, she was pretty serious looking person, kind yes. of, right? Yes. Like a librarian, but kind of ser- teacher. Exactly. And that's what. Like work for her for that role. It's because that was her role is to be like kind of uptight and everything. Uh-huh. And the scene we did was fucking incredible, incredible. Like I, it felt great. Like it was, yeah, yeah. You're strong. Just, yeah. I was young too, so like I was young and I needed to prove something. And I came to America and I, like I'm here and again all the guys on set were like, "Who's that guy? Why did he bring that guy?" I'm like, I'm going to show you why. 
huh? why they brought me. You felt confident too? Oh, I felt super confident. So it was no pressure at all. I was so into her too. Like, like I could, really? like I, wow. I wanted like that big ass. I was like, fuck. You like big ass? Like I'm ready. I love everything. <laughs> I'm going to find anything on a woman that turns me on. Yeah. And sometimes it's not even a physical thing. Like she can say one thing that's going to fucking stay in my mind. Really? That's wow. what's going to turn me on. I mean, that's a big deal because sometimes you got scenes where you need something. Yeah. You got like, I mean, help, I leave mean, me something. But, but, but tell me, how many times you did scenes with girls that were not the best looking girls, but they loved it so much that you had so much fun? And how many times you did scenes with girls that were just drop dead gorgeous, but they sucked? I would much rather fuck an average girl that's hot and horny Yeah. than a pretty girl. because I mean, on average. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Because they... You know, I always have this ideas in my mind that the people have certain ways they live. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. probably can understand it. If you're super pretty or handsome, things are handed to you. A lot of times you don't get to try as hard. When you're not as pretty, you know, you're middle class and you want to prove something, yeah. you're gonna, your brain is wired differently. Yeah, you're going to sure. act different. For so sure. the girl's going to be like, Way hornier, way more into it. Uh -huh. Whether or not she really means it, you'll find out. But more than likely, she's really yeah. hornier than the pretty girl. Yeah. You know, and then the other girls, I don't know, they're fun too. They're all fun. I love them all. I mean, you know. Uh, exactly. That's what's so good. Like, you can't find anything on any woman that's going to, like, turn you on, like. I mean, sometimes, you know what I mean? I mean I'm going to keep it real, man. You might be want to be I, political, I, but I'm going to no, keep no, it I'm real. No, no, I'm serious. But like <laughs> when I tell you that, like like for me, the attitude is what's going to throw me off. If a girl yeah. if a girl has a shitty attitude, I don't even want to be in the room with her. Oh, oh yeah. That's, it, you know, I, that, that's the main thing for me. I, can, I Today, I can't even talk. I can barely talk to anybody hmm. out in the street, a woman, you know, who's got a bad attitude. Yeah. I just gotta. Yeah, okay. I just gotta run. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's just so, it's so offensive. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? And the mentality is different than it used to be. For sure. So I'm just like, what the fuck? I gotta yeah. go. Yeah. Right? But yeah, girl, you're gonna fuck. You know? That's I've yeah. You know that's it's horrible. But sometimes, if you know, I have had situations where if the girl's good, she's mm -hmm. hot. I want to fuck her so bad. Mm -hmm. If she don't like it, I don't really care because he's so hot. I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> so you gotta have that too. Yeah. You know what I mean? But well, who's your favorite performer you've ever worked with? Uh, putting you on the spot, but fuck it. Well, you can't, like, I can't pinpoint one. Like, there are so many, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> 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 You're trying to get me in trouble, motherfucker. <laughs> That's fucked up. All girlfriends and wives are not included yes, in this conversation. Yes, the it's other like, girls don't matter, <laughs> baby. If you're listening, you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, my wife. She she really. It's funny because uh, the first time I worked with her, she was just she sucked. Like it, it was so bad. Uh, it was really? a it was a movie for Vivid, and it was her first movie, and first scene. And there were things that were going on that I didn't know. That, for example, back then she had a boyfriend. The boyfriend said, yeah, yeah, do porn, it's great. And then the day off, the guy was like, if you do it, we're not together. I'm breaking up with you. Oh, and right. so she's already on set with all this shit in her mind, right? But her attitude sucked. And we we're about to fuck. And every 10 seconds, she's like, how's my makeup? Like stopping every, like, you know. And then I... The movie was supposed to be called Caden Loves Manuel. It was for Vivid because she had a contract with Vivid, right? So her first movie was a contract to yeah. Vivid? Is she yeah. really pretty? Super pretty. Okay. I'll show you a picture. Right. And um, it was, uh, this was like 13 years ago, I think. And it was supposed to be called Caden Loves Manuel. I called Stephen Hirsch myself to tell him, please change the title because there was no love between us. So... And they change it to Caden's first time oh, instead of Caden Loves Manuel. Wow. So. That's interesting. Steve Hurts is a hell of a guy. He's a hell of nice a guy, guy. too. Oh. Yeah. He listened, too. That's yeah, unbelievable. A great business guy. Well, he understood. Like, for yeah. me to call and be like, yo, like, this, no one's going to believe <laughs> Caden Loves Manuel. Manuel loved Caden. But, like, it, it was so disappointing because to me, like, when she showed up, I was like, oh my God. She's so beautiful. 
she's really like beautiful. Tall? She's um I think she's like five six, five seven, like tall enough. Super, yeah. You know, just you know, like right, average. You well, know. That's fairly tall. Yeah, yeah, long yeah. legs. You know. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful blonde, great body, like in shape. How old is she? Um, she's ten years younger than me now. Oh, gosh. So, and uh, but back then she was like twenty one, twenty two. You know. So you looked at her and you said, "Wow, she's really pretty." Dude, she was, which is even more disappointing when like. When you're like, oh my God, she's so hot. This is going to be so fun. And then it sucks. You're like, fuck. And but the pussy wasn't good. I mean, it's your wife. I know, no, but I pussy, mean. No, no. You've, no. The, pussy, <laughs> yeah, the, pussy, the, pussy, the pussy was great, but she didn't feel like she wanted to be here. Oh, yeah. So like, it was like. So then I, I refused to work with her for the next three years. Wow, really? For three years, I was like, nope, nope. Wow. They called me to make like. We have the lead role in the movie with Kaden. I'm like, nope, done. I'm out. And then one day, um, I was working for uh, with Robbie D. Uh -huh. you know? And Robbie is like, uh, hey, uh, I want to talk to you about something. But so Digital Playground just just signed Kaden Cross. I'm like, I'm out, dude. Like, don't don't book me with her. And the and Robbie, you know, Robbie likes to play mind games, and he's like, well, she requested you for a first scene, and like. Can you please do it for me? Because we were good friends. He's like, can you please do it for me? I'm like, Robbie, dude, don't make me. Like, I don't want to do it. And he's like, please. Like, she's changed. She's different now. Like, I promise. I'm like, listen, we make a deal. I show up that day. If she has a shitty attitude, I'll pack my shit. I leave and you still pay me. Deal? Oh. And, it, and he was like, deal. <laughs> we show up on set. And she's like, friendly. Hey, man, you had a long time no see. You. I'm like. Hey, you know, but I'm like super reserved. I'm like, so she wanted to work with you all this time. Well, the thing is, she, she didn't know I didn't want to work with her. So th she thought, yeah, I'll work with Manuel. Oh, okay. She never actually told them, yeah, I really want to work with Manuel. But Robbie made it sound like that to kind of convince me. Right. And so in that movie, there is a part of the dialogue where her and I in bed, but not fucking. And we're under the cover and we have like like a talk. And while we're doing the 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 dialogue, she started stroking my dick under the cover and everything. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not uh -huh. you know, that's a good start. Let's, let's let's see where that goes. And then we did a fucking scene, and that scene was fucking amazing. And then after that, her and I would fuck all the time. Like we were on set. Any day her and I were on set, we were fucking. Sometimes they would be shooting a scene downstairs. They would send a PA to tell us to be quiet because we were louder than the scene downstairs. Off camera. Off camera. We were fucking. Which is a cardinal sin. Right. Like, we, we, <laughs> in both it is. Actually. Yeah, that's like, bad news, like, man. And we were do fucking off camera before our own scene, which can fuck you up. Like, you that's know, even worse. Right? And so, like... But we were fucking all the time. But back then, she was in a relationship. I was in a relationship. So we would only fuck on set. Oh, so you didn't feel like you're really cheating. Exactly. <laughs> we're, we so were supposed we to were fuck. Yeah. Set. We were, you know. Yeah. And so. Uh, Which is a lie. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> That's you know, all good. We know now. I didn't know back then, I swear. <laughs> 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 but she. Uh, got out of a relationship at, at the same time I got out of my relationship. And then it's funny to me to say that, but she was actually chasing after me. She was like, come on, come see yeah. me, come see me, come see me. But I lived all the way in the valley and she lived downtown. I'm like, I'm not driving downtown. I'm like, you come. <laughs> I'll come do a podcast with you, but I will go fuck her. Wow, <laughs> but, yeah. but like, I'm like, you come to my place. And then she came to my place. And back then, because I was like still newly uh, like out of a relationship, I was fucking a different girl every day. But the rule was like, when we're done, you're going home. Porn girls? Porn girl, outside girl. like You were picking up outside girls? Yeah, any girls I wanted. Like, Can you pick them up e easily enough out here? Fairly America, easy. You know? Fairly easy, yeah. Because huh? I knew like people that knew people. Oh, that, you friends know, and friends? Yeah, yeah, friends not, of friends. Not just going out hunting. Not really, never let. Like, yeah. It could happen, but not as much. Not too much. Right? And so uh, she came to my place, and we had great sex. 
and I didn't want her to leave. And I was like, eh, it's weird because usually I just once I was done, hey, thank you for coming. See you, Forget right? Yeah. And uh, at your house, actually, <laughs> really, the house I was renting from you. That's when you know. That's when we started seeing each other. Did you like that house? I love the house, man. That pool, <sighs> that pool was nice. Yeah. I, I custom, I designed that pool. Yeah, that pool was fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then that night she stayed, and after that we stayed together. You see any ghosts in that house downstairs? No. Feel anything? But. That was some weird noises sometimes, dude. Yeah, right? That was some weird. That the wood would crack in a way, and I was like, something's here. I was like, dude, there's someone. Like, did you kill someone in this back room, in the <laughs> dark back room? Down below, right? Right? That, that fucking room was weird as fuck. That like, fucking room had ghosts in there all the time. <laughs> I swear to you. Like, I feel like, like out of the whole house, that was the one room I never go to. Really? It was always locked. <laughs> For no reason, yeah. but like it was so weird because everything was nice and bright, but that room was all dark and like set up. And it like, was like it fuck. was a strange room, right? I mean, fuck. it was nice, but it was some weird. Yeah, yeah. I used to play video games down there by myself. Yeah. I had my, you know, everything set up. You had a pool table there. Yeah, too, pool right? table and video games, you know, and the sen you know TV and all uh -huh. that stuff. And I feel something on my back all the time. You're like, man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but I mean, like you know, and then one time I was partying. By, you know, I used to party like once or twice a year, right? Uh -huh. And I was, I was going to go in that room. And all of a sudden I was like, I better not go in that room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back upstairs. <laughs> Something's going on, man. Oh, shit, man. Like, like, this was a nice place, man. Like, downstairs. Uh, I think you used to have a gym, right, downstairs? Uh -huh. I yeah. put jujitsu mat because that was around the time. I had mats there too. That's, that was around the time where I was doing a lot of jujitsu. So I had uh -huh. jujitsu mats and my friends would come and we would roll and, you know, it was crazy. Did Joe Rogue live right next door? Yeah. Did you ever talk to him? No, I, like, I never, like, go after, like, even yeah. my neighborhood now where I live, like, there's a lot of yeah. celebrities. I I never I never yeah. cared about anybody really either. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. But yeah, the house is cool. But um, So that's where you met her and... And that's where love hit yeah. at my house. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Thank Glad you. Glad I could help. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> she said the house she was like, ah, oh, I better marry this dude. <laughs> oh, she liked the house? Yeah, she liked uh, the house, of course. Cool. Yeah, nice style. Right? It, was, it was very fucking yeah. nice. Nice neighborhood, too. Is your house now a lot nicer? Or is it just. It's a, a different setup. My house is more like a ranch. I got you. You know, because all the animals, I have like horses, chickens. You have chickens? Yeah, I have like cats, dogs. You get eggs too? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fresh eggs. How many yeah. chickens? We have like five or six chickens. So is that five eggs a day or? Yeah. 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 That's cool, right? It's good. So yeah, I mean, in this particular situation uh, yeah. with the coronavirus, there's no eggs anywhere. It's perfect. And my uh, wife, she's like really into like growing like uh, vegetables and like right. the eggs. And wow, that's cool. Yeah. So you met her and then you guys just. You said stay and yeah stay and then she never left and then uh we she moved in with me and you know you got married and now well, we're engaged but oh, like okay. we call each other husband and wife but yeah. we're not like officially married right if like, you say if you say it yeah who's to say you're not yeah a yeah. piece of paper well, for like me right no. eight years together it's the same like yeah common law i guess is the yeah. idea but yeah that's cool so who's the other girls uh, the other, uh, you know. <laughs> We're talking about but, the who's well, the best girls. Well, through the years, there's been so many good girls. Yeah. Like you, you know, like um, fuck, so many. Like it's just hard. Like like I feel like they're only as good as the last one. You know, like right now, there's a girl named Angela White. Yeah, I heard she, about her. Fucking amazing. Yeah, Abella Danger, fucking amazing. Um, there is a, a girl named Di Gianna Dior. She just won be Best New Style. Gianna Dior. Okay. Beautiful girl. Loves what she does. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there, but there's so many. Remember Katsuni used to be amazing. Uh -huh. There's so many. Like through the years. Uh -huh. So, so many that it, it's hard for me to like you say all the names. I understand. But sometimes, just like you said, the ones that come to the top of your head yeah. through the years, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like in... 2000, 2002. Yeah. When you first got to America, what girls do you remember that were good? Fuck. The problem is I don't remember most of the <laughs> names. Okay. The names, like I remember the girls, but the names, like. Yeah. That's cool. Fuck. So only those girls yeah. ring, ring your bell right did you now. Fuck, did you fuck Taylor Sinclair? 
Remember Taylor Sinclair? Big natural tits. Yeah, she was around the late 90s? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, early 2000s, when I first came in the... Yeah. In the you know what? Taylor St. Clair, I'm, big I'm natural pretty tits. sure. Yeah, big nat She was a penthouse girl, I think. Maybe. The penthouse magazine. I think she... I was in Vegas, and she was a, said she was a big fan. This was before she was in the business. Really? And, um, yeah. Yeah, girls used to hit me up as I'm a fan, you know what I mean? And then have a friend or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I think I fucked her in Vegas because... And she was a real nice person, yeah. yeah. She was real cool. She was real yeah. nice. And she was good, horny, yeah. Yeah. Fuck, I never fucked her. Because when I first came to America, I started going out with a girl mm. who was a roommate. And so because of that, she didn't want to work with me because I was, really? yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, fuck. Really? She was, she was nice, right? I remember. I'm pretty sure that's her. Yeah, big tits. There's no other St. Clair like that. Yeah. That's it, yeah. 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 You know who else was pretty cute? was Shane. Yes. Remember Shane? Yes. What'd you think of her? She's she was good. Then she did Shane's World, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I remember mm -hmm. her. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, I never fucked her. She was good. She was just sexy. They had these girls have different personalities, you know uh -huh. what I mean? So you have different ones, right? Different categories, different feelings. She's just that sweet girl that that's cute getting fucked. And you know, you have somebody like um, you know, there were some girls, you know, I gotta think about that were so aggressive mm -hmm. right yeah but they like you just can't think of them can you i mean yeah, thinking yeah, of yeah. fucking no like, like i have so many like i have so many but i can't like through the years it's it's so hard man yeah like the, what girls were really i know by face i just don't know right remember their right? Names. exactly i remember their pussies better than their names right yeah well anyways there's a lot of girls that, that right. were that were aggressive usually i can remember them but i'm trying to think of the girls that were aggressive and horny, you know, compared to sweet, and then you got sassy, yeah. you know what I mean? Belladonna was great. Well, I didn't work with her, but I'll tell you about, I first met her in Jim South's office, uh -huh. and I had my, just got back with my girlfriend, you know, who I was going to burn her name in my arm. I took fire, burnt it on, right? In front of Jim South. <laughs> Watch Jim. <laughs> Smoke was flying. And I just got back with that girl, right? So I didn't want to fuck it up. But Belladonna's first day was from Jim, and she we were in the back room, and she was like, hey. I was like, let me get out of here quick. <laughs> you know, before I fuck her, you know what I mean? Because, you know, the girls yeah. are like, fuck. Anyway, but yeah, she was, she, I didn't work with her, but Nacho was going out with her. Yeah, right? yeah, I remember. Yeah. And then Nacho, I don't think Nacho wanted me to fuck her. He says no, but I don't think he wanted me to fuck her. Anyways. Yeah, it's a it's a tough one, you know. Like I, it's always a touchy like yeah. thing when your friend goes out with a girl and. And I'm not that guy. I don't yeah. care. You know what I mean? Because I yeah. I had so many girls. Of course. Of I, course. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I, you know, I don't yeah. want nobody fucking my girlfriend. Yeah. I don't want Nacho fucking my girlfriend. He's got a bigger <laughs> dick than me. You know? Definitely don't want a Nacho <laughs> to fuck my girl too. <laughs> right? Fuck it. Yeah. It's cool, bro. So, <laughs> so you can't. Yeah, some of the girls. I just there was this one dark brown haired girl. It would take these big dildos and ram her, ram them into her. And I remember that girl being like a nat, like a big contrast between her and Shane, right? Yeah. But there's so many, there's thousands of girls, so you know many. what I mean? So it's just, excuse me, folks. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, even doing a top 100, I don't think I could do a top 100 because it's be, it wouldn't be fair because there are so many I will forget, uh -huh. so many like that will come back later. Like it's, it's just hard, man. You want to know who was really pretty nasty? It just came to me. Gina Fine. Oh, she was very uh, nasty and had something with her. She was so sexy. I mean, not, it, she was good. You know what I mean? Great. Gina Fine, she had the short hair, right? Yeah. She was really, she had her own little groove, her own yeah, vibe. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I worked with her and she was. I remember an old scene with her where she had like, I love 10 lines, right? Mm -hmm. Because I grew up on the 90s porn. And uh -huh. in the 90s, they all had the 10 lines uh -huh. and the high waist, you know? So now when I'm on the set and a girl has that, I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's enough. I, I grew up on the 80s hair, all fluffy. <laughs> 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 lipstick. Yeah, the boost and lipstick. I like Fuck, that. Yeah, yeah, right. Tracy Lords. Oh, oh my God. God. Tracy Lords. Oh, we love you. Fuck. And there was a girl that looked so pretty. Her name was Stacy Donovan. All blonde. I think I know that name. So and there's a cute girl named Candy Evans. Fuck. Right? I didn't get to fuck them, right? Fuck. But, you know, I, re I remember those girls. I got to fuck Portia Lynn. She was tall, sexy, yeah. redhead. She was great. There's another girl who was great. Yeah. I got Did you ever fuck, what was the name of that girl? It was the giant fake tits. Well, me and Rocco did a, a, a couple of DPs with Chelsea Moore. Chelsea Moore. 
the, uh, Letha Weapon or something like Letha that. Lethal Weapons. Lethal Weapons. Yeah. She had fake tits. That's Blonde, awesome. right? Blonde? No, no, she had... Redhead? Yeah, kind of redhead. A huge Small girl, tits. kind of petite with big... Tits. Yeah, probably, yeah. I liked her. I think if that's the girl... Yeah. I think I liked her. I think she was. She had some good pussy. I'm all about the pussy and the passion mm-hmm. together, and the way you look. I, I yeah. Anyways, yeah. So <laughs> I think if it was her, because there was another blonde. I thought they had just like that. There's like in that time zone. There's like four or five girls that came out of these huge crazy tits. But yeah. if you're saying she was shorter, a little reddish brown hair. Reddish, yeah. reddish brown hair. But yeah. I didn't like. You know, it's hard in the movies to know. How. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. But she was good. I liked her. Yeah. So. When you work for Rocco, yeah, when, were the scenes long? Super long. Super long. It's funny because like it was always super long when I was in the scene, but when Rocco was in the scene, there was the shortest scenes they would shoot, right? Really? And, it was like, <laughs> and sometimes I would be like, bro, my balls hurt. That's how, how much I need to come right now. Like, I need to come. Wow. You know, almost there. I'm like, motherfucker. And then he would go in an hour later, he was already done like fucking having fun. I'm like, whoa. But he'd do his scenes in one hour. And yeah, yeah. And me. And he was doing something that was really small, too, where I would work with every new girl. And then he would, from there, see what girls were good and then reschedule the good one with himself. So he knew that he would never do like a bad scene with a girl that didn't like it, wow. which was very small. Yeah. You know? Are you serious? Like I was test driving the girls and then, oh, this one is really good. Let's bring her back. This oh. one, not so good. Go. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I was like, man, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Well, he was pretty serious oh, about making yeah. sure those scenes are good, huh? Of course. Yeah. yeah. He was, yeah. Uh, I mean. Uh, and I respect that. I mean, same yeah. thing. He's such a passionate dude about porn, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, yeah. I mean, what can you say about Rocco? But for me, it's only good for me. You know what I mean? It's only, I mean. You know, I remember being on a sets with him. I was always, you know, his, his personality, you know, whatever his um, spirit or yeah. something, always, you know, you're mag- he's like a magnet. You want to yeah. be near him. You know, I love being on the sets with Rocco. Yeah. We yeah. were on a sets probably 10 or 20 sets. You know, he'd come into town at 30 sets, but it was always, T.T., I said, Rocco. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was just felt, Funny dude, too. It was like, felt good. Funny dude. It was, in those days... It's a lot less people, right? Yeah. Lot, you know, you yeah. kind of know, but you don't know because even before your time, yeah. it's a very small amount of people. And so the people you liked, it was just like a family, you know what I mean? Exactly. So like, yeah, I believe it. It was very I nice. It. So can you tell me any wild stories, you know, that you were on the set, any wildness, any crazy sex? You've had, you're fucking your girl in the back, okay. Uh-huh. But how many girls did you fuck in the... Back room. Dude, so many. So many? So many. You, you know, when I first came to LA, uh, so almost right away when I when I did Fashionista, I met a girl in LA. Beautiful girl. And she was Taylor Sinclair's roommate. And she was doing like softcore porn, but not regular porn, right? Uh-huh. Her name was uh, Chelsea Blue. That was her stage Chelsea name. Blue. Beautiful girl. Tall, dark hair, blue eyes. She loved doing sports, like she, like, so good, right? Hard body. Like, yeah, like, perfect for me, right? And then shortly after that, she couldn't deal with me doing porn anymore, so we broke up. Then I moved into a hotel in the valley, and almost every night I had a different girl, like, because I would do scenes and then bring the girls back, and then the next day I had another girl, and then so the 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 manager of that hotel was like, what the fuck, like. How does he get all those girls to come back, right? And mm-hmm. it was just like back then, like, it was just so easy. Like every girl wanted to fuck, yeah. like and all the time. I feel like it's a lot different now. A lot of them like enjoy what they do, but it's not like back then. But also I'm different. Like I'm not trying anymore to get girls to follow me and fuck them the way I used to. Uh, I mean, but I'm not around, but for some reason I had that same feeling uh-huh. I understand it. It feels from what I see or hear on social media or people coming in. Yeah, it seems like it's not the same. It's not the same. And now with the OnlyFans and all that, I feel like no one fucks just for fucking. Like a lot of them, they fuck to create content and put it on. <laughs> they film everything they do, even when they have sex with a fucking 
Like I was talking to a girl in the industry and she does escorting. And she was like, yeah, if my client lets me film it, I do half off on the, <laughs> on the escorting. Yeah, so what you're telling me is that fans only and the whole new generation, new yeah. society has taken a lot out of the love of fucking. Yeah. You know, because I'm yeah. a person that <laughs> likes to fuck, you know what yeah. I mean? And so it's being lost. It's almost, there's no more like genuine sex. It's just like programmed, you know, hey, let's film it so we can both make money with OnlyFans. It's a waste if you fuck for free now, you know. That's sad for me. Super sad. Super sad, yeah. Super sad. We're not going to cry, but, you know, we're Yeah, right. No, we're still like a, <laughs> at a good place. But, but you know. I'll cry a little bit. That's <laughs> sad, really, because the love is... I'm all about love, too, so... For sure. You know, TT Boy is wild, crazy, whatever, but I'm all about love. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... There was a time where that's all I wanted. Like, I was fucking more off camera than on camera, too. Like, like I wanted to fuck all of them. The makeup artists, the... PA girl. Did you fuck any of the makeup artists? Fuck yeah. Which one? Did you fuck Lillian? Did you fuck Lillian? No. No. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Lillian's hot as fuck though. She's hot, hot or hard? Hot. 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 Oh, yeah. You didn't fuck her though. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Is that? laughs> no. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. She was hot as fuck in those days. In those days, and she's she still, still now, sexy. Like, yeah, like she's fucking super hot. Yeah, but yeah, like we. Oh, that there was this one makeup artist that was half Asian. Did you ever see her? Half white, half Asian. She was fucking sexy. Big natural tits. No, no? she was more petite, but she was just so pretty. You must have missed her, I guess. Yeah, uh, probably. She was pretty, and she, she looked like you had to work a little bit, but you know. Uh -huh. like, For the right one, she'll be just like, hey. Uh, <laughs> you know how that goes? Dude, I won't say names, right? But one day there was that lighting guy. And we're on set. And his girlfriend was the makeup artist, right? And he's talking. But I won't say the names, right? And he's talking to us. Yeah, I can tell she's the one, you know, I fucking Not love. my cousin, right? No, 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 oh, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Victoria was the girl. She was fucking beautiful. Oh, yeah. Uh, the... The lighting guy is like, yeah, so cool. Like, it's mine. Like, I can't tell. We're gonna get married and blah blah blah, right? And then a friend of mine, performer, just comes out of the bathroom and he's sweating. His clothes all fucked up. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck happened with you? And he's like, man, I just fucked the makeup artist in the bathroom. Oh shit. And I'm like, fuck, that dude was just telling us, like, she's the one, she's my one, I'm in love, and we're gonna have a family. And You're she, gonna have a family, all right? <laughs> on set, with her dude doing light, and getting fucked by another dude, I was like, that's fucked up. Did you fuck her too later? I fucked her, but not that day. Like, uh, later? It was long, like, you know, way later. She, you came on to her? She came she on to you? Hot. No, she came on to me. She, really? was, she was hot, though. How many girls do you think you fucked off camera on the sets? On sets, off camera? Fuck. So many. A <laughs> couple hundred? I used to, like, more. Yeah. I used to fuck all the time, dude. Uh -huh. Like some of those, you know, some of those features, they're so long and you have to wait and you have all those girls and like, they have little shorts on their, and they want to fuck too and you're there and you're like, eh, okay, let's go. Uh -huh. So 300, 400? 400? 500? I couldn't, maybe, like, you know, I couldn't put a number, but I used to always, All of them? always try to fuck the girls. Yeah. Okay. It's not very professional, but like I say, like, professional is not necessarily a good thing. Well, if you can do your job uh -huh. after you fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares? I was, you know. You know what I mean? I mean. I've done, I've done well. I've done okay. <laughs> if you can do the fucking job after, who gives a fuck? Really, as yeah. long as you're. As long as you're not breaking the pussy, you yeah. know what I mean, for of the course. next guy. Of course. So that's not cool, but if you don't like the next guy, then who cares? <laughs> and, you know, that happens. <laughs> you come in your mouth and go kiss him. <laughs> oh, <God>. You did <laughs> that? <laughs> that's fucked up, dude. Yeah. Years ago, I did a scene for Christoph Clark, right? And it was four guys and one girl. And, like, we start with the four guys. And then Christoph wanted one, one of us eat, like, to have, like, some me time with the girl. So you take her and you fuck her. Then the next one takes her and then the next one takes her. And then, 
So we all have like a little time by ourselves. On and camera? On camera, okay. on camera. And then I take the girl with me. And one of the four guys, I didn't like him. And he didn't like me. And he was the one going right after me, right? And so he's coming around because it's his turn, right? And right in front of him, I tell the girl, come here, come here. Lick, uh. my, lick my ass. And she starts licking my oh, ass, God. licking my ass, licking my ass. And then Christophe, like he's giving me the sign, okay, she's got to go to the next one. I'm like, go kiss him. <laughs> he saw it? Done. <laughs> you fucked him up? <laughs> fucked him up. <laughs> that was so fucking bad, dude. But like, yeah, like, and then he fucking threw a fit. Like, ah, how do you want me to stay hard after what he did? Blah, 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 man. Grab his shit and left. I was dying. I was dying. Was like, you gotta be careful. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, be nice. Get set up, right? <laughs> Have you did that very many times? Set somebody no, up? No, 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 no. Like, like, no. like, um, Derek. I did something to Derek. Here. Oh, you did? Yeah. What'd you do? Well, because uh, back then he used to perform, and I uh, with a little help from friends, right? Yeah. I mean, I hear exactly. I found out that he was injecting his penis, right? But I didn't know before that because I never met the guy. And I was working for Anabolic, and the director calls me and is like, fuck, I just, lost, I just lost the location. I don't know where we can shoot it. And I told him, hey, I have a big hotel room. Why don't you come shoot it in my, in my room? Like, you don't have to pay. Like, just, let's just fuck in my room. Mm -hmm. Easier for me. I didn't have to take a taxi because I didn't drive back then to go on location. Just come in. He's like, okay, great. And, and then I'm starting thinking, like, fuck, wait. So that dude shoots his dick. What can I do so he doesn't inject his dick, right? So really? I'm like, so I'm like, yeah, I was petty as fuck, but and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I do some I'm, sabotage, I'm, oh, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, if there is no door on the on the in the restroom, like we can shoot because we're all gonna see him, right? So I go and I try to take the door off, but in the hotel rooms they have like a thing to so you can't. So I broke the door <laughs> to, to, to take the door off. The, it's petty as fuck. That was, that was years later, 20 years later, I realized, like fucking 17 years later, I realized how petty that was. But it, it's a funny story. So I put the door under my bed. And then when everyone shows up, I tell them, hey, sorry, guys, something happened with the door. So we can go in the bathroom. Or if you go, the door's open. And the girl's like, fuck, like I need to prep. It's an anal scene. I need to prep for it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the girl is, I'm like, fuck. All right, let's see if we can put the door back. So we kind of put the door back, although it's broken. So she go in there. And I'm thinking, fuck, what can I say? What can I do? And then I start talking to them, acting like I don't know that he shoots his dick. And I'm like, hey, did you guys hear about guys in the industry injecting their dick? the fuck is wrong with those motherfuckers like I go, he's right there he's right there but i pretend that i don't know uh -huh. this is the first time i met him like who the fuck does that and the director is looking at me is like motherfucker you like fucking the shoot up for me <laughs> like don't fuck and he's a performer too so he's like fuck. who's that who's that john strong uh -huh. and so he's looking at me like fuck right does he shoot up too i don't think so oh, okay no and then he uh and then uh I tell them, like, I swear, if I know I work with a guy that injects his dick, he's not touching the girl. She's mine. Like, he touched her when I want her, him to touch her. Not, you know. And then I'm like, motherfuckers. I keep insisting. And then the girl comes out. I'm ready. He grabs his little kid, goes in the bathroom, closes the door. And John Strong looks at me and is like, fuck. Comes out. We're ready to go. And we stop the BJ. And although he went to do his shot, he couldn't get hard. Really? Like that thing didn't work. And so we stop and I do exactly what I said. I grab the girl. I'm like, bah, 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 bah. and then John Strong cuts. And he's like, all right, like, hey, do your thing, you know, to get back. He grabs his shit back, go back in, shoots again, comes out. And this time he was like this. And then we finish the scene. And looking back at it, that was stupid. But I was young, man. Like I was young and... I was like kind of angry, like to me, it was like those cheaters, and the, you know. Yeah, they are cheaters. They are, they are. But then you understand, it's not easy to get good guys on set, and so. You, yeah, you, you're gonna tell me you control everything the guys you sh you, you shoot. 
tech, it, it's impossible. No, I mean, yeah. well, you know, the thing is that it makes the performers uh -huh. worth more. You know, they have yeah. more value. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can't really tell who's valuable. Yeah. You know, kind of, you know what I mean? It's true. No, it's true. Why, why should performers yeah. who are not real yeah. get take advantage of the forefathers, yeah. right? Who paved some of the ways, kind of, I right? Agree. And then they get free money, free ride, and free yeah. fame because they're not really doing what yeah. naturally. I mean, it's kind of a... No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, you're right. So that's what I kind of look at. But, you know, if you're a producer... A cameraman, you definitely don't want a soft dick. Yeah, you don't want to be you know here I mean? all day waiting for a guy to fucking yeah. pull on his noodle. You know, that's fucking horrible. But that sounds kind of funny. So yeah. you were Bro. thinking, why did why did you do it though? You disliked him, or you just disliked the idea of? Uh, not the idea of like, cause back back in the days in Europe, we were like all proud. Like you know, if some if we knew someone was taking something, the the guy was kind of outed. And I came in America with that mentality. I remember being on set for like uh, Nick Pinkowski. Remember that dude? Yeah. And yeah. he shot big films. They had a little bowl with Viagra. Ultimate films. Yeah, I exactly. Think. Yeah. And they had a little bowl with Viagra. And the guys would come. And I was like, what the f What? Oh. It's normal. I was like, this is normal for you guys? Because to me, it's not normal that, you I know. I never saw it, yeah. But I wasn't yeah. around after Viagra yeah, came, yeah. but yeah. Fuck yeah. no. Ah. Yeah, right, man, you know. But if I mean you're already getting paid beautiful money, it sounds like so yeah, I'm it doesn't super really happy. matter, you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't matter. So what is the most girls you work with in one scene? So I did a scene for Christoph Clark with fifteen girls. And I did another girl uh, another scene for Rocco with twelve girls. And for Rocco was twelve Czech girls. And that evening when we went to the restaurant after the scene uh, he realized that he didn't turn his mic on, so oh. the next day we had to reshoot it. Oh yeah, you know. But it was fun, right? It was so fun, so fun. The one for Christoph was tough because he was fifteen girls, but same thing. He wanted like he wanted me to come in, fuck one girl, and then go in, fuck two girls, and then go in three girls, then two, and and then at the end fifteen girls. But by the time I was at the fifteen girls, I was tired because I already fucked for hours. Uh -huh. You know, and then there were Russian girls. They were not the most like into it girls, right? Hookers kind. Yeah, uh, the Czech girl was a lot easier, like because they were all so into it, and I knew most of them, so they were already into me. So it was. Uh, you like the girls to be into you, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, like uh, it helps. feels good. Like it feels good yeah. when you know the girls want to fuck you. I think the older you get. Right when I was younger, I didn't could care less. I mean, I liked yeah. them to like me, of course, yeah. but the older you get, the more you need that special <laughs> attention. Little, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think you're a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think of the American girls compared to the European girls? I love, I love how the American girls understand that this is show business and want to be stars. In Europe, they don't care. Most of them don't care about being stars. If they could do porn without anyone knowing they do porn, they would even more. Here, I always felt like the girls want to be porn stars, you know, and they understand that the bigger the name, the better it is for them and the more things they can get out of it. And I love that. I love that. I feel so like they understand that it's a show that you're doing and although some of them might not be super into it, they're good at pretending that they're into it. And that's okay. Versus in Europe, most of the girls are not into it. You watch their scenes and they look like they're not into it. You know? It's a huge difference. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a little coldness mm -hmm. in Eastern European girls. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what I've seen. Yeah. You know? Barely acknowledging the guy. You know, like, you know, yeah. I was always like, just weird like yeah so at least the american girls are trying to make it look good exactly w would you say that the girls because you're you know i've heard a lot of times about this angela white yeah. you know she's supposed to be very good right oh, she's amazing and i've heard stories that she's great and she's into it are the girls the same from you know 97 when you started uh -huh. just in general to now 
or are they more into it now because of the hype in America? Yeah. Or were girls like Kasumi, who was I know was pretty horny? Yeah. Are they the same, or are some girls from before uh, more horny? Or? I I feel like they're pretty much the same. Like, same. Like I I feel like that. It where like there was always girls that were really into it, and girls maybe a little less, but but overall, I think they're about the same. Kasumi was good. She was amazing. I heard a lot of people talk about. I put her in my movies yeah, too. Yeah, she was amazing. But um, I, I don't know. She never did it for me. I didn't work with yeah, her. Yeah. I don't know. I liked. You know who I really like working with? Annie Cruz. Super good. Oh, Annie Cruz was nice. Yeah. She was f good pussy. Man. Yeah. I loved working with her. Yeah. You know? So nice. So nice. So horny, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, I had to bring her up. She was so good. Yeah. Can't forget some of the girls that are so good. Of course. Yeah. She was nasty, too. She nasty. was horny, nasty, great. Yeah. She, I think, really, she's one of the better porn stars. Yeah. Really, you know? Yeah, she was really good. She was good. Really fun. I used to... Yeah, <laughs> you know, what I mean? she was great. I loved her. So, is there any wild stories? You know, we, I asked before any wild stories that you saw happen, or that happened on you on the set, like Honestly, anything crazy? Nothing too crazy for me. Like, like, but I'm not like that guy. You know, like Stay I don't quiet. do crazy. Yeah, I don't do crazy. I do fights. You saw on the set. I have a funny story. Okay. About a fight on set. Okay. Uh -huh. It was uh, in Czech Republic. It was a. Uh, a friend of mine who was the director and he's filming those two black guys, right? And they're fucking a Czech girl. Uh, what, any black guys that I know? Uh, 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 yeah, there um, was... Um, American or a European? No, no, one French guy and one... Uh, Joachim? Brazilian. Joachim and the Brazilian guy was Kid Jamaica. Kid Jamaica. Nice guy. Right. Very nice guy. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. But back then they hated each other. Wow. And not only they hated each other, but... In Eastern Europe, there's not a lot of black guys that uh -huh. do scenes, right? Uh -huh. And so, so they're jealous of each other. But yeah, but they have to work together. Kid Jamaica was a really good performer, really in my good. opinion. Yeah, right? really good. Joachim was pretty good too. Yeah. Okay. But at the end of the scene, they got into a fight because uh -huh. during the scene they kept calling each other names, and you know, and then they end up into a fight. But they just finished the scene, so like they're naked, huh. and they fight, they fight, and uh -huh. they end up rolling on the ground. <laughs> Looks weird. Two dudes naked fighting, uh -huh. and you were there? No, I wasn't oh, okay. there. But my uh -huh. friend called me right away because uh, okay. he was like, "Dude, there's still blood everywhere." Whoa, they were so they were fighting decent. Oh, I heard that he tried to bite his dick off. He bit the dick. He got stuck, and the only thing he had was the other guy's dick, and he bit the dick to blood. Like he bit it like hard, and. But like, like that's not weird enough. But that's not the end of the story. He let go. He has his dick like bleeding everywhere, like literally pissing blood. And he goes to grab a knife. The other guy runs out of the building, naked in the street of Prague, with another black dude pissing blood from his dick with a knife running after him, trying to catch him. Kid Jamaica trying to catch him. Bro. That's fun. That, you hear that? Can you imagine you're there shopping with your family and you see two dudes naked running again like after each other with a knife and a fucking bleeding penis? That's fucked up, dude. That's fucked up. That's, that's pretty fucked up on Joe Kim's part. You shouldn't be doing that. There's a line you should yeah. you should have. Well, first of all, get dressed before you roll on the ground together, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, yeah. I would yeah, that's yeah. My my one of my ex girlfriends used to chase me down the <laughs> a hallway of an apartment, buck naked with a knife, trying to stab me. <laughs> right way back in nineteen ninety. <laughs> what a fucking picture! Uh, after all these years, you know, you have a lot of girls you had sex with. Would you, how many girls do you think? Can just what do you think? No Three thousand, four thousand? I have no idea. No man. idea. What do you think? I think about twelve thousand. Fuck. Because you know, I did a lot of yeah, extracurricular uh, yeah. activities. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea, man. Twenty three years, dude. But I don't know. Sometimes the same girls, but so three, sometimes the same girl, but sometimes fifteen or twelve, you know, in yeah. one scene or something like. So I have no idea. Five thousand? You think probably around that? I don't know. I mean, you know, nobody else has these numbers. Not, they're Fuck. hard to come by, <laughs> right? Fuck yeah, Will Chamberlain, yeah. probably. I mean, I think I really have a solid twelve, but. Fuck. 
That's a lot of fucking, you know? That's a lot of fucking. That's yeah. a city of girls right there. Yeah, right? Small Fuck. city. Right. Bigger than a small city. Right? Mark Davis comes from a small city, right? <laughs> In England? Yeah. And that's bigger than a city. Fuck. <laughs> you said you like every, everything about the girls. Yeah. But do you, so you wouldn't like a big butt compared to a spinner, just whoever that person is, pretty yeah. much your thing? Yeah, depending on the, on the woman, like I'm going to be attracted to one thing or another. Like it can't be the same thing on each of them. But what turns you on the most? What really gets to you the most? Like, really? On a girl, the part, or whatever, the girl. The, what, the big ass, the big tits, the fat pussy. It's also going to change, like, you know how we, it's like a cycle. Sometimes you're going to be into big tits, and sometimes oh. big big ass, sometimes oh. small tits, sometimes. You, you know, it goes by waves. Like right now, for example, I mean, really into big natural tits, right? doesn't mean i'm not gonna fuck the ones that don't have big tits right or mm -hmm. fake tits i don't care like i will still fuck them B but it depends like it, it's all like when i watch porn like i research something specific and then i'm gonna watch everything that has that on it you know right now i'm watching uh you know what i'm watching right now in south of france they have like a um, naked beach right and uh, they have two sides they have the family side and they have like the swinger side and so on the beach, they have people fucking. And some guys, sometimes they put hidden camera and they film people fucking without them knowing, right? So I've been watching this lately. Fuck, man. Really? I love this shit. It's nice looking people? Sometimes. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not. But it doesn't matter to me. It's just the fact that they're doing it so freely and they don't care. And it's, it's anyone. Like it can be like a fucking like old lady sucking her husband or sometimes a young girl like getting fucked by three guys you know like it's it's a trip really yeah that's what i love that shit dude that's what i'm into right now next week i'll be into something else but. i mean it sounds like you're still staying horny that's pretty good fuck. man fuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> fuck you know what i think that is energy uh -huh. right yeah you have energy out there and when you put energy towards something maybe makes more energy kind yeah, of you know what i mean for sure so if you stopped having sex i'm not having sex like i used to yeah right so i'm not the same maniac i used to be but if i probably start working as an actor uh -huh. right i probably would be yeah. probably go back you know and you know you say hmm. <laughs> i always i always tell my wife the, the day i retire you better be ready because that shit's gonna smoke like <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna tear that shit up like fuck because we're pretty active sexually but like yeah. you know uh, I sometimes I, I'm just ever since I was a kid, man. I, I would get I need something new. It's a crazy thing. You ever have that? Of course. Yeah. Of I course. mean, I, <laughs> I got twelve thousand new. You know what I mean? Fuck, so, man. You know what I mean? I'm, whatever, right? Twelve thousand, dude. Twelve thousand. I think it's twelve thousand. I mean, I would put a lot of. No, I, I believe you. A lot. I think you know what I mean. I believe you. I mean, I don't, I'm not gonna tell you on camera. You know what I mean? But yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, but yeah, a lot of girls. You dated the girls in the business. Yeah. You married one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But how, you said you went out with this girl and then you, the relationship stopped because she didn't want you fucking. Yeah. So how does it, what are the goods and bads of dating girls in the business? Uh, I feel like the good thing about dating a girl that's in the business is that they know how it really is. When I used to date girls that were not in the industry, their imagination was way worse than what it really is on set. Like, they thought everyone was fucking everyone. That, you know, yeah. like, the camera guy's fucking the girls. The, you, you, you know, it's not like that. I mean, it can happen, but it's not like... Most of the sets are pretty professional and keep everything, you know, straight. Well, I tell you the truth between me and you, uh -huh. I wouldn't want my civilian girlfriend on a porn set. No, exactly. <laughs> but, but no, but but that's that's why sometimes it's it's simpler when it's a girl that did porn or do porn because they understand what you're doing and they know how it is on set, versus like your girl staying home with the crazy imagination, right? But let me tell you something. I mean, uh -huh. I'm, I'm I'm listening to your point, uh -huh. but. I know what goes on. Porno says, man. So you can say that. But I don't, I know my imagination is going crazy. Here's my thing, okay? 
My wife knows too many people. I know if I did anything okay. weird, I would be snitched Busted. on. <laughs> and the next minute, I will get a phone call. So like, oh, I'm okay. pretty like, I'm oh, pretty like. Excuse well, me for saying what I at said. At least my sets now are very like strict, I you know. But uh, no, there was a time it was different. But um, the thing is, like, like see when I when I started going out with my wife and she was a performer, it was a good timing because it was right when she wanted to stop. She was arriving at the end of her career. Like she didn't want to keep going. She's done that already for a while. How many years she did? I think she did it for like almost ten years. Okay, that's a good you time. Know. Served served ten years in the yeah, you know, in the porn force. Maybe a little less, but but and then she was like, Okay, I've done what I wanted to do and you know. So the timing was perfect and then she decided to stop, which was great for me honestly because it would have been really difficult for me like she handles it like well me performing i always joke about how she's my pimp like as long as i bring a check home she's okay with me fucking girls but if there's no check there's no fucking right maybe right right just, that's the definition of a pimp <laughs> yeah you know go well, get the money i mean life is life and this is life and some sometimes it's hard to understand yeah the way things really are yeah Maybe they are that way. Hey, trust me. Like when I come home, she's like, "Where's my money, bitch? <laughs> Where's my money?" Oh, she already has the back end ready. Uh -huh. you know? But so she decided to quit, and I was I was happy with it. How long were you going out with her before she quit? Couple months. Couple oh. months. Oh, so nothing. Yeah, almost nothing. So and you didn't have much torture. Yeah, no, I, I, you know. You don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, sometimes maybe it's a little bit of like self-confidence issues sometimes it's just like i just don't like it i don't like it yeah no i don't like it you know like and some people i feel like sometimes like people are swingers and enjoy that or like maybe maybe they have the right way maybe it's so much easier for them to deal with it hey i'm happy my wife is having fun like go have fun baby but come home you know i love you <laughs> don't leave me for the young guy that you just <laughs> you know like <laughs> But so you don't like swinging either? No. Well, don't get me I wrong. I don't like any of that shit. Well, don't get me wrong. If I'm the one fucking and she's watching, I'm okay with it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. You don't want anybody fucking your girl. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't want no, anybody fucking my girl. No, yeah, I know. But, but, but people will argue, oh, wait. So you can, but she can. Yes, I can. But the deal, hey. with, the deal what you have to know, with, the deal we have with my wife is that the day she doesn't like it anymore, I'll stop. Because because I don't really need to perform to do well business wise. I make really good money even without performing. I invested my money in a couple of things that bring me really good money. Uh now I'm also making money playing video games and being on Twitch. And you, you know, I could live well. The only reason why I keep still performing and doing those things is is because, like I was telling you earlier, like I'm trying to build something so one day when I'm not here, my kids will have everything they need without us being around, you know. I could be retired and still do well and make good money, but I don't live just for myself. Uh, sounds good, but me as a performer and uh, a lover of women... Uh -huh. I do leave it like that. No, but like, like you know, like <laughs> you know, I don't want to push I, it. But and I understand, and I'm pretty sure the day where I'm gonna ha like stop, like it's gonna be really hard. It's not gonna be easy. Like it's not gonna be easy. Yeah, because you love women. Yeah, and that is a big part of it. Probably you love women. But there is another thing that I don't want, like in this industry, and it's something that terrifies me because I'm 44 years old. I have gray hair and shit. Like I've seen. Like, for example, Steve. I've seen scenes where, like, girls would show up and see Steve and flip and refuse to work with him or, like, say, no, he's too old. I don't want to get there, dude. I don't want to get there to the point where, like, a girl rejects you because of looking that, mm -hmm. like, like it, it's it, it would be really hard for me. You've had a lot of love, yeah. so it'd be really hard. The girls love you. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm lucky, yeah. I'm lucky. They, I mean, it sounds like you've you know been pretty persistent and pretty strong yeah. about your craft. So a little lucky. You're born to be a good-looking guy. You're tall. You're a good-looking guy. So you're lucky in that aspect, but you still work. Yeah. So a lot of guys came in that, you know. 
but also like like it's also we go back to what we were talking about like like it's not that we are so great as also because the other ones are not good that when they fuck a guy that wants to make them come then it's a treat because mm -hmm. most of the guys they don't give a fuck about making the girls come you know Probably, yeah. Most when they fuck them. guys that are here to make them come, they're like, oh shit, now I can have fun. Today I'm gonna have fun. When you make them feel special, like now it's gonna be a great day. 